For purposes of this video, I'm using two different types of influence. The first is proximity, which is the speed of the agent times two to give us the radius of how much proximity we're going to be influencing. In the case of threat, uh, I'm using a radius of 25. Also notice that the fall off of the threat radius is an inverse quadratic. That means it only falls off as it gets close to the end. One of the main features of the influence map system is the ability to get information about a point, whether that be at your location or the location of some other agent or object. In this case, the agents in blue are closing on the red agent as an enemy. However, they're asking the influence map system what the ally proximity is at that target, and if it goes above two, they stop closing as part of the behavior. So if you were to watch again, notice that they are closing on the red agent, but once the first few get there, the fourth agent, the one on the left, stops closing until enough of the agents move away that the influence drops below two and then continues to close again. Note that the decision of greater than two is part of the behavior system that is only getting information from the influence map system to use. That means that the influence map isn't actually controlling the behavior, just providing information. In this case, there are two enemy agents, and all of them are closing on the nearest one. However, when enough of them get there, the rest of them say, oh, well, I'll just go and attack the other agent instead. Of course, we have enough agents that both of them can be surrounded. So in the meantime, the other ones just float around in the middle, suggesting where they are possibly needed. Of course, again, as some agents move away from the red targets, uh, others may start to close until we have achieved over two again. So again, if you watch, notice the others reroute toward the second agent, but when enough agents get close enough to the second one, the others stop as well, check back on the first agent, etc., or even just float around in the middle in the meantime because they can't close on either one. By combining checking the proximity at a location, as well as a location hint as to where that proximity nearby is less, you can actually have agents that space out from each other. We've all had the problem where agents will tend to get too close to each other, particularly in a village or a city, and they need to space out. So in this case, these agents are intentionally getting too close to each other, but when they do and they detect that they are based on the proximity to location, they are trying to find a better space to stand. So they move away from each other. In this example, I created an agent, the light blue one, who is intentionally trying to stand on top of others. And you'll notice that they are not only moving away from the light blue agent, but also to a location that is away from their allies. Again, based on the proximity map, they're trying to find a less crowded place to stand. One of the other things the influence map system is good for is finding a location to go or to do something. In this case, notice that the blue agent is trying to stay out of the proximity radius of the red agents. So for example, if the blue agent was doing ranged attacks, he would be completely fine standing where he is, but once they got too close, that is within proximity, he's trying to find the closest place nearest to him that has the least amount of enemy proximity influence. By comparison, if we were to use the threat radius as something that the agent was trying to stay out of, he would obviously be trying to stay farther away and certainly much sooner. In this case, for example, if those were ranged attackers or if he was just trying to stay out of the threat radius for whatever reason, the red agent is going to try to find a lowest threat area closest to him and continually updating that to move towards it. So as you notice, he would even move past one because there's more threat behind him. This is particularly important if you were in a circle, because if you were simply moving directly away from whoever was closest to you, in a circle you would actually tend to move towards someone who is on the other side of the circle. In this case, since the influence is constantly being updated, he's going to shoot a gap to get out of the middle of the circle. By adding a single line of code, to the location computation that includes the spacing away from allies as well as away from enemies, you can actually have agents scatter in a situation like this. 
In this example, there are a couple of things in play. The blue agents are intentionally trying to move towards each other, but they will scatter away from the red agent. The red agent is only moving towards the blue agents when it detects a concentration of greater than 2.5 and then moves to that point. The important thing is, though, it isn't moving towards the greatest concentration only when a concentration increases above 2.5. This is great for deciding not only when, but where to do something. For example, using an area of effect spell, when and where to throw a grenade, or just an agent that likes to jump into the fray in the middle of a group. So again, notice that it waits until it detects a proximity group great enough to get its attention and moves towards it. In this next example, you'll see that it starts to move to the southeast and then quits because the group broke up. Now, even though there is a group of greater than 2.5, it's too far away. It's outside of the interest range of the red agent. Of course, as shown previously, the blue agents are merely trying to find an area that is away from the red agent and away from each other. So they're using the spacing code as well. In this final example, the dark blue agents are protecting the large light blue cylinder. In the meantime, the red agents are trying to get to the blue cylinder, but are scared off by the blue agents. The blue agents will patrol around and generally try to stay close to their light blue agent. However, when they get within proximity of a red agent, they will move towards it and scare it off. Notice that they don't continue to chase it. That's because they are balancing out, staying out towards the enemy, but towards the thing that they are protecting. One thing that's very important to note here is that at no time are these agents programmed to move towards each other, the allies or the enemies, or towards the thing that they are protecting. All of the information about where to move is coming from the influence map system. This is simply to prove the point that information that they're getting from the influence map alone can make for compelling behaviors. When combined with true behavior code, it can make for a very powerful combination. So again, the red is trying to close towards the blue, but stay away from the dark blue. The dark blue, when they detect a red guy, will chase it away until it gets far enough away, and then they'll stop chasing because they are also trying to stay within the influence range of their light blue thing that they are protecting. Again, they're only moving to influence map locations.